I am your host, Lisa Blonet, and I am here to bring you the messy in these streets. Look, we got to talk, but before we get started, push that subscribe button. Let's go. Shankula Robinson, businesswoman, founder of a women's fashion clothing line, hairstylist, and social media personality from North Carolina, United States, was unalived while on vacation in Mexico. Now, she died on October 29, 2022, shortly after traveling with a friend, a group of loose acquaintances, and after arriving in the Mexican resort town of Cabo San Lucas, Mexico. There was considerable public interest and intrigue surrounding the cause of her death. In addition, substantial collaborative efforts of citizen journalism and amateur news bloggers played an important role in bringing attention to Robinson's death to the point of Mexican authorities facing enhanced scrutiny, particularly because the municipal police department initially treated the death as a case of conventional tourist alcohol intoxication. A video later surfaced which showed Robinson being violently attacked in a rental villa prior to her death. Now the circumstances leading to her mysterious death as well as the medical treatment, police report, and forensic inquiries into the cause of her untimely passing have led to an ongoing high profile transnational criminal investigation within the United States and Mexico. It's been a little over 70 days since the passing of Shanquilla Robinson, and we haven't really had an update since in and around January 13th of this year. Now, what you are about to listen to is an exclusive interview with the Attorney General Daniel De La Rosa Anaya and Gerardo Zuniga, okay? I put this as an English version only. Maybe it's a little bit easier to understand. Go ahead and take a listen. Up to now, this is the end of the first part of the interview. During this interview, Attorney General Daniel de la Rosa Naya spoke with very technical words about the case. So we would like to summarize in a general way with more common or friendlier translation. The first question I asked was, what happened? He replied that the case is under investigation. The results so far are that an order from a judge to arrest and extradite the person responsible for the physical aggression of Shanquela Robinson has been issued. This confirmed what we had already said here before, that the people who were with Shanquela reported an accidental death to the emergency numbers. However, he said that when the Attorney General opens the investigation folder after Shanquela Robinson was declared dead and the results of the autopsy were obtained, they discovered that the cause of death was a cervical and neck injury. My second question was, in the United States, there's a lot of controversy over the contradiction information reported. What the Cabo 6 reported to 911 was that it had been an accidental death. And what the results of the autopsy were, was that it was a cervical and neck injury. He replied that indeed, an accidental death was first reported to 911. And that when the Attorney General's office took the investigation, before the video that went viral was released, they were already investigating a possible crime due to the result of the autopsy. The protocol of femicide was immediately put in place. He stated that when the investigation into Shanquilla Robinson begins, her companions leave the villas immediately. And the next day, they leave San Jose del Cabo Airport for the United States. The third question I asked him was, why didn't the police arrest any of the Cabo Six at the time that they answered the emergency call? And he explained, he explained to me that this generated many doubts for the American people. His reply was that at the time, the only information they had was that it was an accidental death. This was before the autopsy was conducted. And this is what Shanquilla Robinson's friends said to the police and to the doctor. My fourth question to him was, are you trying to tell me that at that moment, that is before transferring the lifeless body of Shanquilla Robinson, you had no proof that she had been murdered. And he replied that indeed at that time, there was no evidence. And that's exactly what the judge did on November 21st, 2022, when he requested the arrest for extradition purposes of Dejanay Jackson. In general terms, this is what his answers consisted of on this first part of this exclusive interview. 
Stay tuned on this channel. Share this interview on your social networks with your family and friends to reach as many people as possible. Invite them to subscribe to our channel or to, or to Metro Polymex because next Friday, January 27th, we will present the second part of the interview with the district attorney. The topic will be the investigation process. My name is Gerardo Zuniga. That is it for now. I will be back. Make sure you subscribe, like, comment, and share my shit. This is Lisa Blonet, and I'll be back on the next video.